Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to History with the Bard. I am your host, Creepy Bard, and today we're going to talk about Taoism. Now, before we get started, a couple of notes. First and foremost, this is going to be a little bit of a shorter, shorter session, because I am the tired. Oh my, it's been a bit of a long week. Uh, second, we're... How do I want to put this? So... There is a portion of this conversation that we are not going to have. Um, and that is, uh, a lot of you probably know, or at least know a little bit about uh, Taoist sorcery. And when did I pick up this bow and arrow? That's awkward. Uh, but yeah, you probably know a little bit about Taoist sorcery. Um, I have opted to not cover that in this session. Uh, pretty much based solely on the fact that Taoist sorcery and just the the mystical elements of Confucianism and really just anything magical in China all seems to follow relatively similar rules and will require a little bit more research on my part uh, before I actually have you know something concrete to tell everybody. Um, about it. So, we're going to cover that in a later episode, uh, either next week or the week after, I haven't really decided yet, on Chinese mysticism. So, I haven't forgotten about it, I haven't ignored it, it's on the block, it's on the chopping block, we gotta get there, it's on the, uh, not the chopping block, I guess, it's in the cards, we just need to, you know, get some stuff sorted out and get a, get a handle on what all of that is. This is going to be very important uh, to understanding Romance of the Three Kingdoms as we make our way through it. Uh, I guess one last thing real quick. I do not have nearly as extensive notes as I should have on this right now. Not because I didn't do the research. There's plenty of research to be done. Just I didn't write as much this time. Um... So this will be a little bit more of a, a little bit back to our roots, a little bit more chaotic sort of session, as opposed to what we use we usually do. I think my notes this time around equate to a single paragraph, reminding me to talk about Lao Tzu. But we're here to talk about Taoism. We're not here or Taoism. We're not here to, uh, you know, listen to me blather on about shit that I didn't do. So, Taoism. You'll notice that. It's spelled Taoism, but it's actually Taoism. Um, that comes from... Oh, man, just an entire other topic that we'll need to have one of these days regarding the way that Chinese is translated into phonetic characters. Um, there are a lot of different systems, and those systems are weird I don't really know why they do things the way they do sometimes, but that's what we've got to work with. And since I don't speak Chinese and can't read it yet, that's just what we're going to have to deal with. Um, but yeah, so Taoism is... It's from the same time frame as Confucianism. If you'll remember, that would be the Warring States period... Or Warring States period... Uh, era, I guess. Warring States era the spring and autumn periods. So, like I said the last time, um, tons of uh, different philosophies and religious ideas and stuff like that sort of cropped up during this time frame of Chinese history. And it led to some interesting... Let's just fucking end this. It led to some interesting situations. Um, first and foremost, all of the religions that we have to talk about. Uh, legalism, Confucianism, Taoism. Um, I think Buddhism didn't, ma uh, didn't show up until much later, but it becomes relevant for our discussions later on, so we'll talk about that too sometime. Um, so, created during the spring and autumn period of... 
the Warring States, or Warring Kingdoms period. Warring Kingdom, Warring States. I think it might be Warring States, actually. I've got a netbook somewhere, I'll have to look. Um, the Warring States period. It was created by a man named Lao Tzu. We think. Uh, a lot like Confucianism the uh, and Kung Fu Tzu. Uh, the... The origins of this person tend to be shrouded in like myths and legends. And while I don't have any cool stories specifically about Lao Tzu or how he could have been several teachers and da 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 da, da like he could have been several teachers. We already know we, that is true, but it's very much uh, the same as all of the stuff surrounding Confucian culture, uh, Confucian. Ideal ideology, are the origins of the Confucian ideology. Uh, lots of stuff, just kind of hard to pinpoint, hard to to figure out, and just kind of just not a whole lot of records about people, spe like specific people, like this person, uh, survive to that time frame. So. We work with what we got, and as what we've got is maybe this guy existed, maybe it didn't. We aren't 100% sure on that. What we do know, though, is that during this time frame, specifically, is when uh, sort of our story for this uh, this I don't want to say religion, um, but this this philosophy uh, sort of sprung up. Now, there are three major texts for this, two of which I didn't find out about until literally 20 minutes ago while I was going back over some of my notes, or some of my, not notes, but some of my like ideas and thoughts on it. Sort of browsing Wikipedia real quick to double check. Um, but yeah, there are a couple of them. I don't remember the names of them off the top of my head. I did not write them down at the time. I apologize for my grave mistake. But that's just how it works sometimes. Um, yeah, we're gonna get some facility materials out of that. But, so, two of them uh, end up covering the more mystical elements, which is another part of the reason why we're gonna wait on doing the mysticism stuff, because, again, it's just, there's a lot of it that's, it's a very deep topic that takes a lot of extra digging, and we'll just have to wait for right now um, until I've got time to actually look into it. As for Taoism, Taoism is built around this concept of Wu Wei, which is yeah Wu Wei, uh, which is this idea that you, as a human being, should aspire to be like water, sort of come and go, like go with the flow kind of situation. Um, very. It serves as a really interesting counterpoint to Confucian ideal. Uh, Confucian ideals tend to go around this idea that uh, studying and you know becoming an intelligent human being um, and being well well read and well learned are the path to you know enlightenment, the path to becoming a better person. Taoism says no, that's stupid. Uh, you should strive to be wise, but going out of your way to learn all of this, all of the information you can, not worth it. What you need to do is you need to just let everything just kind of go, come and go, kind of flow past you. Uh, it doesn't really put that, like I said, it doesn't put much of an emphasis on learning. Um, this has a very strong ascetic culture attached to it, sort of a... You know, lots of hermits, lots of people living out in the wilderness, uh, you know, just being, just being people. Um, how do I want to put this? It's one of the, it's one of these religions that, you know, would very much be kind of a leftist philosophy right now in American culture. Um, the... It talks a lot because it, because of the time frame that it came out, or it was created in, and because of how 
you know, that time frame needed ways to, uh, you know, run the government and things like that. It's very much steeped in the the, philo- the philosophical aspects of it, at least, are very much steeped in ways to run an effective government. And their ways of running an effective government are basically to not... Uh, sorry. To run an effective Taoist government, you basically need to just let people handle themselves. You put a good example by being a decent dude, other people will follow. And, yeah, just kind of, uh, it even advocates no mil- or a meager military force just for protection. Um, it's very much the sort of, it's not pacifist, I don't want to say, but it kind of com- I guess maybe it could be called pacifist. Uh, conflict is very much looked down upon. Um, fighting isn't necessarily out of the question, but it is supposed to be the literal last resort. Everything should uh, should sort of like have its own say in how its life goes. Da 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 da. Very leftist philosophy for the most part. Um, fuck, this is gonna be a really short episode. Yeah, just. Go with the flow, um, you know, don't rock the boat too much, basically. Uh, very, it's not, uh, I don't want to say it's not steeped in tradition, but that, like, it's very much steeped in, well, I guess this concept of Wu Wei, really. Don't rock the boat. Uh, go with the flow. Don't, you know, fall apart, or don't, uh, you know, push against things really hard. So... Yeah, no, I guess I don't really have much to say about this one. This one is really short, really quick. Um, not a whole lot to, you know, go over. Huh. Kind of expected more out of this. Maybe I just have... Maybe it's because I have fewer notes this time. Ten minutes isn't a terrible amount of time for an episode, though. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, sorry this one was so short. Uh, like I said, there's there's a lot of stuff to cover in the mysticism portion of it, but from the main the main Taoist philosophy kind of boils down to uh, you know go with the flow, don't don't mess with the status quo too much, and you know try not to fight people. Um, it's sort of sort of views farmers as, like, the the quintessential, uh, you know, absolute best Taoists. Because, hey, farmers, they're making, they're out there with nature. They're, you know, participating with all of that and, uh, you know, handling things that need to be done. They're helping people stay alive for the most part. Um, filial piety is, once again, a very big issue in this, uh, in this form of government, in this uh, philosophy, because it's a Chinese philosophy, that's all of them. Uh, yeah. I wish I had more on this one, but like. That's basically just what it says all the time. Um, one, of the, one of the famous quotes you'll hear for. Taoism is he who knows the way does not speak it. The, he who speaks it does not know it. Uh, naturally, I am speaking the way, so obviously I don't know it very well. But <laughs> yeah, it's it's a little bit of a paradox uh, to me as far as philosophies go. It very much advocates this sort of uh, you know laissez-faire. Let people be people. Don't expect too much out of them don't, uh, you know, don't go out of your way to learn things, but it's a philosophy, and the only way that you'd be able to know it would be if you went out and tried to learn it, so, you know, kind of a, kind of an odd, goofy situation to me, but, let's see, I feel like there should be more to talk about, but for right now, I'm not, I'm kind of coming up short. 
yeah, I guess we'll call it there for tonight. Mm. We'll go ahead and finish up this, uh, this session with Dynasty Warriors real quick, but we'll go ahead and call it after that as far as Taoism goes. Um, unlike usual, I actually don't know which one I want to do next. Um, when it comes, there's a few of them that, there's a few of them we need to cover before we start digging back into Romance of the Three Kingdoms. Um, namely, I want to touch on Buddhism a little bit. It isn't that important beyond the beginning of the story, but it's something I feel like we should cover just because. Uh, there's a lot of implications with when a given version of the Three Kingdoms uh, story was, was written and, you know, how it views Buddhism um, that are really important to this discussion as far as I'm concerned, namely the discussion that I want to have. Uh, let's see. We need to cover mysticism because it comes up a lot. Uh, Taoist mysticism, just Chinese mysticism in general. That's going to be a little bit harder to cover because I don't like. I don't really know where to start with that. Um, I know that you know Confucian uh, Confucian ways of doing sorcery and Taoist ways all sort of have a lot of common connectors. They have a lot of common ideas and goals and missions. I feel like that stems back to. Uh, prehistory and early early BC um, we'll talk about the Shang Oracle bones a little bit and that'll that'll give us a little bit more information well, I'll give you guys a little bit more information um, but as for what we're going to cover next I feel like legalism is probably on the docket um, it's one of the three main ones we need to cover before we really dig into it. We can get by without doing Buddhism. We can get by without covering Chinese sorcery uh, or myst or Chinese mysticism, I guess I should say. Uh, but to understand the Three Kingdoms period, you have to understand Taoism, Confucianism, and Legalism. They are paramount to understanding the Three Kingdoms period and the Three Kingdoms story, or the Romance of the Three Kingdoms story. Um, so, thanks for anybody who popped in for a minute. Thanks anybody who watches this later. Uh, we should have this up next week, I think. Uh, once again, I still haven't gotten any, any of the, uh, sources done. It's on my to-do list, but I, classes have been hectic. It's been a whirlwind, but, um... You know, whatever. Uh, like I said, thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys again soon. Have a nice night.